All right, so we are uh, coming at you with a, I guess this video would be more about all the people talking about uh, they don't got time. Um, they got kids, uh, they have a job. Um, what are, the, what are some things they say they can't do? Because I, I, I don't have enough time in the day. I'm working. I'm traveling. I'm on the road. I got kids. I got kids. I got, I got the got, wife. I got, I got not just one kid. Maybe I got three kids. Maybe I got a newborn. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to give you a guy. A guy that has a newborn. A guy that has some other kids. Um, a guy that works his ass off. A guy that travels. A guy that, uh, let's see. Is a success now, but when I say success, I'm saying like like the top echelons of success. I'm saying he's at a pinnacle. Well then, um, well of course he can do it because he's got there. How did he freaking get there? He didn't just fall off the cliff and land on success land. It doesn't work that way. So he built himself up to get to that level. Uh, today he's doing a photo shoot. Next week he's gonna compete and win his pro card. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I, there's, there's these individuals that show up at Gold's Gym at four in the morning, and these mm -hmm. guys are all successful. Why is that? Well, you're not gonna train at four in the morning unless you're successful, because you get your ass out of the gym by five, 5.30, and you start your work day. And then you get your butt to bed at night and bypass the bowl of watching TVs and movies and dilly-dallying around and get your ass to sleep. So you can get up at three o'clock again, so you can train at four o'clock again, and so you can be a success. So again, made himself successful, wasn't dropped off there. It's not from mom and dad, it's not mom and dad's money, it's his money, he made it. Um, he's at the very pinnacle of what he does in the world. Uh, I'll let him explain what he does and who he works with if he wants to do that. But my point here is this, stop the excuses, stop the I'm traveling, stop the, uh, I got kids, I got a newborn, stop that stuff. That's the, you're instantly going to what the majority of society says, um, I got a newborn, so that means I can, I can back off. Mm. I can stop. Um, I got kids, so I gotta give that attention over there. That means I shouldn't be selfish and take care of myself. I'm sorry, what? That's what I hear. I hear you guys say, I, I shouldn't be selfish and take care of myself, and I should just take care of the kids. You have to take care of yourself to take care of the kids. So let's do that. So, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Without on, further man. ado. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> look at that. Thomas. Tom Conley. Look at this man. We're going to take his ride out. He's got a little I think, beat up bug outside. <laughs> it's, a cute, it's a cute little car. It's a little yellow. Take a step back just so I get a little bit more light on the side. I'm going to let Jeffrey get up close to like... His, uh, what we call is dry, he's, he's grainy. Mm -hmm. uh, his skin is in, he's a week out, so he's yeah. like in just peak, peak shape. And, uh, can you oh, wait a minute. I can't believe I almost forgot this, but I don't, I don't think of age ever. Um, how old are you, kid? 48. So, 48, if you didn't, if you didn't hear, that, hear that, yeah. It's 48. So again, not 20, not 30. Not early 30s, not in early 40s, but almost 50, and is looking like a freak. So again, there's going to be every excuse that you have is on his uh, list of why he shouldn't be where he's at. Mm. Everything that you can come up with. I can't get enough sleep. Well, well he is. Um, or at least enough to be still successful and be lean and, and ripped. Uh, I got kids, I got newborn, uh, I got I got bills, I got an ex, ex-wife. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, that's real life. It's freaking real life. That's real life. And again, he's taking, look at this, look at this body. Yeah, I'm gonna get up in this. Look so those abs, dog. Yeah, let's see what you got. I'm putting you on this YouTube like that. Don't cover <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm gonna blow it up. today. One, two, tight, tight, tight. Nice, kid, nice. Yeah, that's not good. bad. Like that. Oof, try it. Show those legs, show those legs. Yeah. Sorry. Jeez. All right. What do we go? Why don't you talk to Shorts? Let's see the, <laughs> let's see the glutes. Hey, we're going to hang out together. We're going to go to work away. So, so we have. Oh, 
<laughs> now, <laughs> now the video's ruined. Now the, now, no, now, now, the, ruined. now the video begins. <laughs> oh, so we are driving your car. Let's turn that down a little bit. What is this? Uh, Luso. Ferrari Luso. All right. So this is what, like 10,000? <laughs> 10, 15,000 for this bad boy? Yeah, for the, for the tire. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about you earlier about how there's a pinnacle or, or a list of things that people complain about. You know, I got kids, I can't train, I got um, I got an ex-wife, I got a I got a full-time job, and I'm trying to become a six I love this one. Can't train. Why? I'm building an empire. Right. Oh. Oh, oh okay, cool. I, that's that's a whole new one to me. That's a new generation thing. Right, right, right. I don't know what that means. I thought you build an empire as you're lifting and building the whole thing. But um, can you explain some of this to me? This list of things that Holds you back, and there's no reason you should be competing next week. Oh, geez, like you said, you know, I got four kids. Like, I my job. You got four kids? Four kids. Wow, there's two kids I didn't even I know about. I'm just practicing in Manhattan, <laughs> and I practice in Beverly Hills, and Manhattan, New York, Manhattan, New York City. And so I fly a lot. It's very hard to meal prep when you're flying. I'm busy. You know, I don't have time for. Well, you're not office. busy. Average person is busy. You are beyond. Yeah, I mean, 12, 15, 16 hour days, but you know, I'm up at four o'clock. I'm at the gym. And if you regiment it, you know, you work out 45 minutes, you're done. You know, if you if you plan it right and you break up your body parts. And, um, so why don't you train at t 12 or one o'clock then? If it's 45 minutes, you can just do it during your lunch. It doesn't happen. There's no lunch. <laughs> there's no lunch. Explain that to them. Yeah, you know, once you get working, there's always an excuse. If it's the first thing on your day, there's never an excuse. It's the first thing on the day. You never miss. You never miss. You never miss if it's first thing in the day. I, I, don't, I don't think I missed one time in this 10-week prep. You know, I even hurt my neck at week um, seven. <clears throat> I hurt my week neck so bad, I take 10 days off. So I started dieting week 10. And then I basically lost 10 days. And in that 10 days, I didn't sleep, I didn't work out, and I barely followed my diet. I was miserable got fixed up by a great chiropractor. Wait a minute, so on top of everything else, you got injured. Right. Instead of not doing the show, you took a little time off, you healed, you saw the right people, and you got right back in the right, mix. Right back in. Well, I thought, wouldn't it be better just to stop? I mean, you know, like, it's funny, because- You're 48, why don't you just stop? You know, my, my training partner's like, ah, just skip it, you'll never be ready. And that was him using his method. His method. What are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> wow, I get it. I'll just work twice as hard once I get back. And I, f I finished prep really last week. I mean, I'm already ready. I'm just trying to like. You're running over this stuff, but I don't think they gather this. So your trainer is a lot like me in the sense of going, ah, just forget it. Right. You won't, you won't be ready. Reverse cycle. You're a quitter. Sure. Right. Reverse cycle. You want to quit? Go ahead and quit. If you really want to do this, I know you'll be back in next week, no matter what I say. Right. And so I don't. I want them to gather that, and I want them to gather that you were injured getting ready for this prep. You work 15, 16 hours a day. You got four kids. Uh, you got a newborn, yeah. a year old. It's, you know, a, it's, it's just a few months. I hear you say all these things. Like, like damn. <laughs> you don't realize it. But I, that, that's because your mental state isn't about what's holding me back. It's how am I going to succeed. And nobody does that. Why doesn't everybody's, this is what's holding me back. Instead of going, no, this is what's gonna move me forward and why I have to go forward. Well, to be honest with you too, and by doing something like this that requires so much discipline, it spills over into other aspects of your life. Organization, work ethic, follow up with people, uh, responsiveness. Everything in your life is a reflection of it and so you, it's almost like if you meet somebody that's in shape, that's in their 50s and 60s, you're like, they must be good at what they do. <laughs> because they're managing that and that and that. And you got people that are in their 30s that complain and complain. They can't get, it, can't get out of their own way. I, I did. I was on a Zoom yesterday with Frank Zane, 77 years old and in great shape. Now, that's, that's a guy with you know another 20, 30 years on us. So 30 more years we get to train and be great. Where you take a 30 year old 
and he's not even training and he's complaining about life already. Right. It's an amazing thing with especially how today's society and how many snowflakes are out there about the world owes me, the world owes me. And I don't understand, and I'm diving deeper into the aspect, not so much of training, health and fitness and nutrition, but the aspect of how the brain works and how a schedule sets you up to win, how your circle of friends sets you up to win, how your work ethic sets you up to win relative to just the training and eating. Well, you know, there's something that we don't really talk about is if you, you know, go back to like prehistoric times, caveman times, you know, men were hunters, right? And so our bodies were built for physical endurance and strength and, and to build and to hunt and do these things. And I don't know the truth of this, I don't know anything about it, but it does seem that when you emulate that in the gym and by expending that energy, I'm more efficient in everything else. So it's almost like my body's like, he's still working, keep him going. Whereas if somebody is stagnant, the body's like, wait, he's not gathering food for the tribe anymore. Let's shut this guy down. I don't know. Wow, there's a wow. biological aspect to it. I don't know what the truth of that is. But it's funny you said that because I always talk about I was a born gladiator. I love the battle. And I love the battle more than I love competing. I love going head to head against somebody, no matter what it is. And in and, and that sense, I, I agree with you 100%. It's like that continuous we're out there and, and want to be battling or hunting or something. So. I'm pretty much a lame driver. I, I, I'm a speed limit kind of guy, and this car is not made for that. This car is made for, well, we'll find out what this car is made for. As we switch up here, I'm going to let this man take over and drive us back. Booyah. So, I don't know if you guys saw this car on the outside, but take a look at this. You know, you know what's great about this car is it's the practical Ferrari. It's got four seats and trunk space. See, it's a family car, guys. <laughs> it's it's a family a, car. It's, it's a four-seater. It's a 12 cell. <laughs> Were you selling the wife on that when you got it? <laughs> I, I'm literally, like, when I, I work out in the morning, I actually go to the grocery store afterwards. And there's literally legit trunk space in this thing. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. You can put surge in there. The seats go down. It's, See, it's crazy. See, so this is a family car. Ferraris are family cars now, guys. See, he's already thinking ahead. Where you guys are thinking this is a problem and the wife's not going to agree with it, call this man. It's a family car. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of saw a vision of what you look like, and today was a shoot, and you're one week out, um, but you're not stopping, and you did a photo shoot all day yesterday, and you've had two bagels this week. <laughs> two bagels. So... <laughs> Plenty of protein. Yeah, plenty of protein, but the carbohydrates are a little slim. And there's no fat on the body, so the body's not going to any kind of utilization of what is naturally in the body. Um, and, and again, you, you've always impressed me, and I know that we talked like a couple years ago, I said, dude, you, you, you got all these aspects of why you shouldn't be where you are. And you are. And it seems like it's the, it's the circle of people that I'm around is, is an amazing crew of people of uh, uh, like Steve Siegel, seventh grade dropout, you know, and, and a multi, multi, you know, aspects of life and so on and so forth. And then Mona is just a, another world, but it's, it's, it's continuously finding these individuals and circling myself with you guys that makes me better and understand what is possible. So, um, it's an amazing, amazing thing. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. Tell them a little bit about, I know if you can, about your work. I do, uh, I do drippy dentistry, baby. Drippy dentistry. I do uh, rappers and singers and vocalists, and I do regular people too. We do a lot of cosmetic reconstruction work, but we specialize in diamonds and, and grills, and you know we do. Million... That's, that's where you're at today. Today, I didn't start. You didn't get that way. No, it's been 25 years, but you know we just did a million and a half dollars worth of diamonds on Post Malone. Put a million bucks on Odell Beckham Jr. Um, you know, it's, you work with some big, big, big names. these guys know the guys, you know, yeah, you, these guys are some of the, the top vocalists in the world, Roddy Rich, the baby, um, and we do really unique stuff, stuff that we Just innovated. Call me a baby? No. Oh, this, okay, okay. This, I... We, uh, <laughs> we innovated these things, so the grills are comfortable, they're wearable, they can sing with them, but they're made of platinum and flawless diamonds, these things are a hundred thousand bucks, so, you know, we do some really exceptional things that really no one else is doing in the world. 
and so we draw a huge audience our audience is global um, so again so. we're talking about you started something it's not you didn't get there today you didn't fall into this it's been 25 years of a struggle to get to a point where this man loves to wake up loves to go train at four in the morning loves to go i'm gonna get on stage i know i got a newborn i know i got this new wife um i got other kids and you love your job and you travel the world doing this and it's like you love everything well, and you blessed. work your ass off to do it and you're not complaining about it you're like no nah, i love this stuff you know the hard work has paid off you know a lot of people in my instagram i have dentists dental students they say hey i want to work with you i want to shout at you i want to do what you do and just give us to come talk to us tell us how you did this i'm like well it's been 25 years <laughs> 25 hard years <laughs> it didn't happen overnight you know um two divorces um you know i lost everything so i've, I've started from scratch when i'm about to california you were one of my first patients i wasn't even in my office you remember i was renting in some little lady's little lady's office yeah there's nothing to it you know now my office is the Taj Mahal and, uh, I'm blessed, but you know it doesn't happen by accident it's perseverance it's hard work it's and you had bumps you had bumps in the road it's just it's just I continuously hear the the snowflakes we call them the complainers everything's wrong everything you, know, you can't do this you can't do that it's the continuous of that which is a mind-blowing thing to me because I'm around you guys, and so I get the two aspects. I'm like, holy sheesh. I grew up in special ed because I couldn't read and write. And I still feel like I'm in special ed because I'm with all the cool kids that, that, that there's no limitation to what is possible. Where all the normal people outside of it are straight-laced and normal, and this is how life is. Life sucks, and I, I hate life, and I got a picket fence, and I don't like my wife and kids. And, and it's like, we're still in that special ed head going, Dude, life is freaking fun. We're doing whatever. I'm eating my checkers. I don't give a shit. Let's have fun. It's Play-Doh. You can make it anything you want it to make it. You know, you know the stuff that we're doing in our office. I'm like, let's do this. Let's just do it. <laughs> Why not? You know, I mean, I when I met Post Malone, he said, "Hey, can we make a tooth out of a diamond?" I'm like, um, we need like a 20 karat diamond. Like, he goes, "I don't care." <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so we did it. We spent a million bucks and bought it and did it. I love it. I love it. Thanks for doing this today. Yeah, my pleasure. I, I think if you guys, if you don't get something out of this, and maybe the one thing that you get out of this is that life is easy for no one. I don't care who you are or where they are today. It's still a struggle for him, but he fucking loves it. Sorry. He loves it. And, and, uh, I, I don't, I hate swearing, but he just loves it. And you guys, if, I'm giving you gold here from these people that I hang out with. That, that this is, uh, and this is one of the busiest. For me, this is probably the busiest guys because because the other guys I talk about, like Steve's got like 15 employees that are raising his kid and stuff. So this guy actually does it. He and let me say this: great father. Not just is he a father, but he he's a great father, um, and he's hands on and stuff like that. And so that's it's again over and above everything else. Let's get back to the house because uh, Serge is going to want you to take it for a spin. And I know you got to get home. I'm not. <laughs> I just peed my pants. <laughs> I was lighting up. I didn't let it go. <laughs> crazy. Oh, okay. Let's go back to talking and going slow. No, fuck that. <laughs> Rip it. Give me the launch ball right here. Hell, hell yeah. Wait, launch this no, bitch. No, no, no. Don't do it. It's too strong. Fuck don't it. Do it. Don't do it. Wait for Serge. Launch that shit. No.
You ever taken it out to like the track? I've, I've, had, I've been on a, a, a wide road on Palisades, like a two lane where there's nobody. <laughs> right. And you do it with something a launch mode. Launch mode is you, you press this right here. Yeah. And you put your foot on the brake and you yeah. push the gas down as far as you can. Yeah. And once you come off the brake using traction, it's fucking. What does it do? It is it like a trick in a video game? <laughs> <laughs> the car jumps up and floats? Wait till Mona hears. <laughs> <laughs> 